All right, so we continue with some lightweight designs. So I mentioned that industry needed it for some time, but academy came a little bit late. So initial designs mainly focused on low hardware footprints because you know people thought that uh, spending small amount of area on the hardware is the best thing, right? And this way you also get some other benefits, but it is not realistic to have a single cipher to satisfy all needs because you know there are other stuff we need to satisfy like latency throughput and so on. To fit within constraint settings, lightweight ciphers rely on simpler run functions or minimal key schedules. The simpler structure of many of these ciphers may lend itself to new attacks. Actually, I all of my contributions to the area of cryptanalysis, I discovered them by working on lightweight designs because it is easier to come up with new ideas. Okay. So there are some different designs focusing on different aspects. I said that initial designs focused on low hardware footprint. This means that they've tried to spend as minimal as possible on the hardware. Okay, so there are some ciphers, as you can see, the initial ones became IOC standard, like present and Clavia became IOC lightweight block cipher standards. Height became IOC block cipher standard, but there were other algorithms that focused on low hardware footprint. But later on, people realized that this is not the only thing we need from a lightweight cipher. So people designed different algorithms, but focusing on low memory consumption on small embedded processors, okay? And some focused on low latency, and some focused on ease of side channel protect, protection. So as you can see, having a one cipher satisfying all of the best properties is not that easy and generally is not possible. An algorithm designed for low latency may require more memory co consumption and so on and so forth. But at the end, having a lot of algorithms or a lot of standards is not something industry wants. Because if you choose three standards, industry says that we have to put all three of them on the device. But this breaks the idea of lightweight design, right? If you put three algorithms that do the same stuff, then you're wasting hardware space. So this is why they insisted that needs to have a single uh, standard, okay? So before NIST, I also actually chose some standards. For instance, I also from since 2012 has lightweight stream cipher standards like Enocore and Trivium. As you can see, Trivium only supports 80-bit keys. So it only provides short-term security. So you shouldn't be using it, but the design is really nice. There's another algorithm, Enocore. It still supports 80-bit keys, but in my uh, honest opinion, I also should remove these 80-bit keys, okay? There are ISO standards for lightweight hash functions like Photon, Sponge, and Orlezanta. There are lightweight message authentication code standards like this. So at the ISO side, we ISO, ISO side, we have a lot of standards, but at the NIST side, we didn't have one until NIST started the competition. Okay. It started with this. So NIST, you can read this NIST reports if you want. So the in this report, they said that they are going to start a competition like process standardization process, and they will evaluate the algorithms depending on these parameters like physical performance or security. So at the physical side, we are interested in how much area they consume. Like at the ASICs, we focus on gate equivalence or otherwise we look at millimeter squares it consume on the hard drive. Memory like RAM or ROM usage, implementation, energy in terms of joule here, or performance like latency, throughput, or power in terms of watts here. And also we want uh, security. Here the cryptanalysis side is here, okay? So we don't care if something is fast if it is not secure, right? So security is a must, then we compare the performances and try to find the best algorithm. So the this is the sum part of a shortened version of the, this standardization process. It all started around 2015 when NIST hosted first lightweight cryptography workshop and get the idea from both academia and industry to see if they really needed a standard. And from these uh, workshops, they realized that we really need a uh, standard. 
So they announced submission requirements and evaluation criteria around 2018. So submission deadline was February 2019. So more than 50 algorithms submitted. So they announced first round candidates at this time. But the number of algorithms were more than they expected. So in a very fast way, they removed, uh, you know, not good ones and announced the second round candidates. Then they host the third and fourth lightweight cryptography workshops. So in all of these workshops, we try to provide uh, security analysis results and performance results and so on. So around 2020, they announced the finalists, 10 algorithms. Then they published some reports explaining how they chose the finalists and so on. So these are good reads, by the way. I recommend you to read them. And uh, they host the fifth lightweight workshop, but I think this was virtual due to pandemic. And finally, just this year, at the beginning of this year, they said that ASCON is the winner. Okay. So they published the report again around this time. So they again hold a virtual workshop where we actually provided our results about ASCON again, their security and so on, performance, etc. So this was the thing. So Ascon won the competition, but you know, preparing the uh, proper documentation and making it really the standard takes a few years, you know, because you this is some official bureaucracies involved and so on. So let me show you the second round candidates. I think from 56, it reduced to this many algorithms. Then third round candidates was this 10 finalists. But as I mentioned, at 7th February of 2023, Nis said that Ascon is the winner. Okay. So to, if you want to summarize, IoT devices are very different than each other, so it is hard to provide standards for all, right? So they are trying to come up with an algorithm that works best in almost all of them. And Ascon is a nice example here. Current device production does not focus on security. Because as I mentioned, this is a very extremely cost sensitive. So people producing small devices generally does not focus on security. This standardization process is going to take one, two years at least, because they're also focusing on if they want to choose more standards. Like ASCON is an authenticated encryption algorithm, but it also supports hashing. So maybe they may also add the lightweight hash function standard next to it and so on and so forth. So Gordon is going to have some workshops and so on. So if you're interested, you can share your uh, ideas during by sending emails to mailing lists of NIST and so on. Producers should provide their own security solutions until IoT standards are available. So this is, as you can see, a problem because producers generally do not provide any security solutions. And this is why many disasters happen at the world of IoT. We may need different lightweight ciphers for different purposes, but again, if you have one, more than one standard, then it causes a problem at industry. So I prefer everybody sticks to ASCON since it's won the competition. Due to their simplicity, lightweight designs may be weak against attack types that are not discovered yet. So we keep discovering new cryptanalysis techniques by uh, you know, analyzing these new simple ciphers. And finally, Lightweight does not mean shorter key. Using short keys provides almost no security. And nowadays, there is no need to use keys shorter than 128 bits. Okay. 